expecting God to do something. Are we following? But that period of time comes so social. I was listening to one pastor. He was, was raking. He was Baba Divi. He came for his church members on Sunday. I was, was afraid. Even stopped all of them from selling. Nobody should sell anything in this church again. It's easy for people to place what we come to do here. You know, if I do business with you here, that's not why we are here. It's, it's just something that flowed out of the fact that we met here, but it is not the reason why we are here. And I think at this time, we are becoming a bit far from being called the perfection of beauty and the joy of the whole earth. For example, I don't have time. When Solomon was dedicating the temple, there were at least two types of prayers he prayed. He said, number one, he said, Lord, if there's famine in the land and your people come to this temple. So God's house should be the answer to the famine of the land. Are we together? Then another thing he said is that he said, he said if a foreigner hears of you, he said, for your name is great. So God power has the ability to attract those who are already connected and those who are far off. In other words, when the Bible says, is this the city that is called the perfection of beauty? It means it was known to Israel and it was, was known to, to foreigners. New Testament even said to us, and when Paul was writing to Timothy, that we must even have a good testimony among them that are without. That, and the word without means that among them that are not even in the faith. There should be a level of reference that comes upon this gathering from within and outside. And I told us when we started this thing, that those, those two words, is this the city that's called the perfection of beauty and joy of the ruler, was actually talking from, I think, Psalm 48 and Psalm 50. Because those were... If you think, let's look at Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2, Psalm 50, verse 1 and 2, if, just to refresh our mind. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mount, in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Something must come out of us for others that are not even here. We are not just the joy of this gathering, we are the joy of the whole earth. Are you with me, church? Say, I am the joy of the whole earth. That's one description that we have. Psalm 50, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 50. The mighty one, the God of the God, the Lord has spoken and called from the rising of the sun to his going down of the same. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Somebody say, God will shine forth. So there is nothing Zion brings on the table than God. What Zion brings to the table in every discussion is who? Is God. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. So tonight we are looking at God, you, and the enemy. Say God, you, and the enemy. Judges chapter 6 from verse 11 to 16. Judges chapter 6. It's a very common story. It's the story of Gideon. The background of it is that Israel was oppressed. Maybe we should even read from verse 1. Let me describe the oppression of Israel to you from verse 1 to 6. Verse 1 to 6. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. One of the things we've been seeing in this study is that sometimes the prevalence of evil in man or on earth is not lack of knowledge of God. It's many a times even the endorsement of God. Now what I mean, I'm not saying God is tempted by evil, but I'm saying there's a list of, there's a time for the time of darkness, even on the face of the earth, because of the disobedience of men. Are we together? 
So there are things happening. The Bible says God allowed it and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because, the, because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the den, the caves, the strongholds which are in the mountain. So people started living in what they would never consider as, as house before. When oppression really hits you, you know, when, when people, there are certain things we call breakthrough. They are not necessarily breakthrough. They are just the description of the fact that we've been abused so long. And where we just get those things, we just begin to say, well, at least. So somebody celebrates a third car. A, a car that has been used three times. And where it was coming, and it comes here and it says, I have a breakthrough. When you choose dens and caves as houses, something has really happened to you. So the Bible says this oppression was so thick that the children of Israel were dwelling in dens. So it was whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites will come up. Also, the Amalekites and the people of the east will come up against them when Israel had what? Sown. Yeah. They will encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. They will come up with their livestock and with their tents, which means they don't come in a raid. They come and settle. Are you following me? They build their tents coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number. They will enter the land to destroy it. Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. It is a point where pain really gets to pain. Do we cry out? Are you following me? There's a point in your life where delay does not make sense anymore. There's a point in your life where some pain does not make sense anymore. And it's just, it's just natural. There's a cry out. Um, my prayer is that you will cry to God. Do not just cry to people and, and things that will complicate the journey for you. It came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to them. But I, I can just stop this. So that was the description of the times and season in which Gideon was raised. Let's go to verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the terrible tree which was an offer which belonged to Joash the Abirazite, who while his son Gideon threshed with in the wine press in order to what I did from the midnight. The wheat should be in the threshing floor. But if he's doing it in the threshing floor, don't forget the Midianites are in the land with their tents and with their camel and every sustenance and every sustenance that Israel has, they do what? They just take it. So people started taking the den. The den and the cave of uh, Gideon was a wine press where he was threshing his wheat in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Somebody said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You have two things in your advantage. Number one, God is with you. Number two, you are not ordinary. Are you hearing me? One of the things I want you to know tonight is that you are not ordinary. The world and the devil will do everything to you to make you feel ordinary. As I was coming, I remember early days of my faith. I, one of our mentors had a meeting, and they titled the meeting, We are coming soon. Those days, we are used to themes like, Jesus is coming soon. Are you following me? But he turned it around and said, You are coming soon. And when I saw the flyer, I said, Coming soon. You are coming soon. It, it, some of you are so broken down, so abused that if I tell you, that you are the one that we have been waiting for and that you are coming soon. It's going to take so much for you to believe it. So the Lord said, the Lord is with you, O oh, oh mighty man of Elah. And Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? This is a golden question that has never ceased on earth. If God is God, why is there earthquakes in the world? If God is God, why is there evil in the world? If God is God, why is my prayer not answered? Have you ever seen people ask that question before? Have you ever asked that question before? 
Pastor will just keep saying all is well. Is really all well? If the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Where are all these miracles which our fathers told us about saying, did not the Lord bring you out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord turned to him and said, go in this thy might of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And he said, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my father's house. The Lord said to him, surely I'll be with you and you will defeat the Midianites as one man. That's the enemy. So, the Lord is with you, almighty man of the Lord. God, you, and you will defeat the Midianites as one man, the enemy. Someone say, God, you, the enemy. Now, when the Lord, when the angel spoke to God, to Gideon said the Lord is with you two things came Gideon said if the Lord is with us why has this happened to us? where are all his miracles it doesn't look to me like Gideon has stopped believing God it doesn't look to me like Gideon says there is no God when you see these things happen on the face of the earth there are two things that can happen to your perception of God is that you start believing there is no God or you start believing God exists but is passive about our lives. And both experiences are invalid. Hallelujah. Are you following me? They are what? I'm not hearing. They are what? Is that you become an atheist? Which is one of the challenges that is facing the world today. When people look into the society, why is this, all this happening? If God is God, if God is interested, why is all this happening? There is an upsurge of atheism in the world. And even in the church, it's not exempted. People have started doubting whatever they have always believed. Go on social media and see people. All the stories of uh, God open Red Sea. I do. Are you following me? Because as if every time people believe God for something, it never worked. Some people believe God that some people should not die, they die. Some people believe God that this nation should change. It has changed. Some people believe God that there were certain things they've taken time to pray about. And they think that if truly they've prayed about it, at this time, those things will never be an issue. But somehow, somehow, you see have elements of them. You see that you become what Psalm 14 verse 1 says. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. I know that most of us, they have not arrived there. You will not arrive there. The fool said in his heart, there is no God. But there is another version we can accommodate even when we don't become this version. That version is in Psalm 77 verse 7 to 9. Psalm 77 verse 7 to 9. Because this, this this the first person that this situation challenged is, uh, is challenged Gideon's understanding of was not even Gideon himself was God. If God is God, where is this thing happening to? Us? So when things are happening to you, the first thing the enemy wants you to begin to have a question about is not even yourself; it's your God. And most, most times, he has not been able to push most of us to say God does not exist, but he has been able to push some of us to the point where we will say, with the Lord cast off forever, will he not be favorable no more? It's called the days of miracles are past. We do not say it's not favorable, but we are may saying maybe the favor does not exist or extend till this moment. As his mercy ceased forever, as his promise failed, forevermore has God forgotten to be gracious why is it that the glory days of our faith seems to be in the past and everybody that wants to refer to the revivers are even referring what to the past you can even go to a meeting today all set up to just recount the stories of the glory of glorious old days and you just feel connected when somebody how many of you have had this is the last surviving man that had Ayobabalola before 
that man can have a fame just because of that. Not because of anything, but because he can tell us things that happened many a times because very few things are happening. Amen. Among you here, when last did you hear of a cancer patient that was ill? It's an open question. I'm not saying God is not doing anything. Rafa and the hospital. The hospital is a faith built hospital. Isn't it? Have your faith been shaking there before? In a faith? Or listen to one pastor. This they had a daughter that got married first time. He had a baby eighteen years after the marriage. I cannot even imagine. He said by the tenth year of the marriage, he was himself that told Buddha who and had hoped. The guy is a very moral spirit. He said why? He said the Bible said train up a child in the way to go. He said the Bible didn't say train up your child. The Bible said, train up a child. Said, because they are parents waiting and trusting God for a child as they are ch children trusting God for a parent. And, that's, and it's true. And they adopted. But in the 18th year, said, when he was going to preach for them in that church, the widow was past 40. She said, said that I yeah, just no, there is this tight level of insufficiency that is really revealed to you when you face certain situations. The only thing you can just say is the funny thing is that the day God wants to step in, just be God will step in. I just pray for somebody that today will be the day God will step in. I don't know why. A certain that when they stay too. They will read the one that one, the one telling you the truth. As God forgot, at this point, we are still calling him God, so we are not fools. But nevertheless, we are not actively driven in faith. And I think most of us have found our our what our address here. Because we cannot just wrap our mind around the fact of saying God does not exist. It's your it's your your uh, feel good way accusing God without feeling that you are accusing him. Still, even the betrayer wants to identify him but actually still kiss him. Doesn't want it to look. Don't get what I'm talking about. It's in all of us. When we say, who do you Father Lord. I will start accusing God by praise. Are you not the one that they said, open the red sea? <laughs> Are you not the one that pastor said something? I said, your servant is lying. Oh. No, they said, when people say those things, you will betray with a kiss. We know you. We have been there. Because you can't man up. You are not in Europe. You are not in America where you can boldly look at everyone and say, God, which God? Yeah, you even know that if you say it now, you feel like the ground will open. Everything in this atmosphere speaks mysticism. Everything, the ground will just open. Hey. Some of you see life. Say two days. Two days ago, I had some people in the National Space Station and the equal that should bring them Boy, like for the first question I told myself, so he lay a while no? I had to start praying for them. So, listen, so they said, and there have been three failed re attempts to return. <laughs> so, they are going to Elon Musk to arrange how to. What is the assurance that even will want to send? I said, God, these people are family. Oh. But I was just asking myself a question that so in actual sense sun has never needed a battery replacement. The moon has never needed a replacement of bulb. 
but we have never sat at home. But it's all right. I, you know, some people are there. If you live in those systems and you say, God, you say, hmm. and they are there, and you know what? The, the nation is not doing prayer. If it happens in Nigeria, what will happen? There will be a national day of interdimensional prayer for the return. Because we can't even trace people that are kidnapped there. Talk less of people lost in international space station. What is even international space station? Some of you are even looking. I don't know. It's easy. They don't know. That's your assignment. Of you, you just like using phone. Uh, what do you call it? That I have a iPhone. I have a data. I think it's flying from this wind. Don't want to know anything. But that's by the way. But listen, how many of you think that know that we are not saying too much if we tell people that God walk miracles? If he can't walk miracles, then it can't be God. If anything that troubles me troubles God, then it's not worthy of the pe- being the person I should run to. Are you following? Acts 26, verse 8, Paul said. Why should it be taught to be incredible that God raises the dead? Why should it not be an incredible thought that God raises the dead? Because number one, God forms life. The formation of life itself is already a mystery enough that can make me accommodate the fact that God can restore life. The Bible told us the reason why Abraham was able to offer Isaac is because he had received him first in a form of the dead. Because he received him when his body was dead and Sarah's womb was dead. So when God said, offer him, it was easy for him. If you have understood immaculate conception, it should not be hard for you to understand the resurrection of Jesus. Do you understand? Because he's still God. Why should he be taught? Incredible that you should not that God cannot raise the dead. It means if you doubt resurrection, it's not resurrection you doubt. There are other aspects of God's movement and God's work that you have doubted that climax you into what you are what is now the face of your doubt. Are you, are you following me? The face of your doubt will be that God raised the dead. But the fact is, the reason why your mind cannot be wrapped around that fact is that there's so much of God's essence that you have doubted silently that when it was now put at your face that God can do this you cannot accept it again are you following me making any sense so like Gideon Gideon said where is this God how many of you know you need God huh? how many of us really know we need God how many of you are you are you really planning for your retirement with this your with this your present flow of life where will you be in the next 10 years without divine intervention who can answer hmm? How many of you can really sing? It's one of my daughters here. Who I'm talking about. Every time I call, I say, So how much are they paying you? I'm embarrassed. What she says. She works even. I pay her less than 50,000. In this country. Country where the governors are cannot are saying they can't pay sixty two thousand naira. Sorry, really. you do sixty two. Even you. If you want to even write some certifications, some exams, you can't even write it with that type of money. So, in other words, God must be able to raise the dead. Who understand what I'm saying? Say God. And the beautiful thing is that God is not just able to raise the dead. God raises the dead. And the dead does not just mean physical death. In the days of Abraham, it means what has exceeded what you can naturally believe for. Because when Abraham was believing for a child, that death is natural capacity. 
So in the name of Jesus, whether the atmosphere lines up, the times lines up, the economy lines up, or you won't end like this. Yeah. Why? Because God is able to what? Raise the dead. Hallelujah. So if, can we agree, have we said to the fact that God is God? Let's come to you. Because what God told Gideon is, the Lord is with you. Oh, mighty man of valor. Many a times when we just make it absolutely on God, we are not saying the full statement. Because not all that will happen in our life is absolutely on God. You're still with me. You are a mighty man of valor. But that is one of the hardest things to believe. Sometimes it's very hard to believe God. But sometimes it is harder to believe in who you are in God than in who God is. You get what I'm saying? It's harder for you. It's easier to say there's God than for you to say God will use me. Because by the time God told Gideon, Gideon said, <laughs> Number one, how can you be whose father? Was the priest of Baal? You read in the Bible that they, it was from Gideon's house that Baal worship. All of Baal was in his father's compound. God said, "God is with you." Some of you, even when you check your lineage, it has already disqualified. But God is with you. I need your mind to back point the God's man. Because even in that Judges 6, I think from verse 25 to 35, one of the first assignments God gave to Gideon was to go pull down the altar of his father. The Bible said Gideon was afraid. From 25, 6, 25. Gideon was afraid. The Bible said he did it in the night. Because he was afraid of his father's household and the men of the city. He didn't even know he needed to go into the city. The, the opposition to his journey was forced from his own house. He had to organize in the night. The conversation of and you see that this that is so far from where they started. The Bible says his father was the priest of, of Baal, a pool now. The he himself told the, the altar of Baal. He himself told the angel. He said, my father's house is the smallest in Manasseh. Manasseh was an half tribe. It was not even a full tribe. It was the tribe of Joseph divided into two. And his father's house was the smallest. Go back to that uh, verse. Um, you can let me look at that verse. His father's house was the smallest in Manasseh. Then he now, he now concluded by saying, I am the smallest in the smallest tribe. See, this is our screen thing. Sometimes it's a problem. 15. We are that short on this. That's why you'll be saying you are not, you don't know what I'm saying. He said 15. So he said, Oh my Lord, how can I? We have left the issue. Of, the first argument I have is about. God. The next argument I have is about who? Myself. How can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. The clan is the weakest. He is the least. And the Lord says, surely I'll be with you. You will defeat the Midianites. It's one man. Somebody say amen. God chose the man whose father was a priest of Baal. God chose the man that was hiding Where was Gideon? Hiding. You are so much that we are not going to look like what God wants you to be. 
when you start out. Because the enemy likes hiding story in your crisis. As though there is nothing. Do you choose the wine press? God came to him in the hiding. Why? God chose the weakest in the clan, the weakest clan and the smallest in the clan, whose father was a priest of Baal, who was in hiding. Because the Bible told us in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31, that look at this calling of yours. Not many wise. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 26 to 31. But see your calling. Tell your neighbor, see your calling. Say, open your eyes. Consider your calling. See your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. The base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Continue. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Who became for me and for you the wisdom from God. Even if you are not wise, there is a wisdom from God. Are you following me? And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Verse 31. As it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So we have looked at the Lord. I hope we find a way to understand that there is no problem with the Lord. I've looked at you. And we are looking at the enemy. Who was this enemy? Like I showed you at the beginning of this study in Judges 6, verse 1 to 6. The Midianites were so numerous, the Bible said they sat like locusts. Every nook and cranny of the land, you, you see them. They impoverished Israel. One of the things that we have been learning from the spirit of Babylon in our study is that it's prevalently manifested in every sphere and every quarter. The, one of the most challenging things about Babylon and about the works of darkness in this sphere is that there is no real hiding place or choice you can make that can hide you from them. Are you following me? Even if you go hide in a wine press, the Midianites are like locusts. There's still chance that if you stay there too long, they will meet you there. Are you following me? See, battles are so numerous that they have, they have stopped labeling them. Are you following me? Sicknesses, earthquakes. I mean, the, the, the things that threaten human existence are so many. If you don't have a natural physical problem, you can have a psychological one. People jump down from their balcony and die after building companies. Asking yourself. Some of you think now that if you build a two-story building, that the story of life has finished. Build it. When you build, some of you say, if I build this company, some of you say, if I start this ministry, you say, if I travel out. They play. This numerous Amalekite do you know what locusts are? The Bible says when they enter, they leave no sustenance. When you even see a swarm of locusts enter a place, they can pass through and you will see no anything. They will just pass through. Are you following me? And cause a famine. So, there was no, they were so numerous. But God said a statement so strange to Gideon. He said you will fight them like you are fighting one man. I'll bring all these things that are so numerous and reduce it to like you are handling a man. How many of you know sometimes that when you fight within your keda, it's easier? Even in boxing, they would say there's something called the feather weight. And there's something they call the bottom weight. There's something they call the heavy weight. If you're a feather weight fighter and they put you beside an heavy weight, you have died. Under normal circumstances. Because by the time the guy gives you one, so the truth is that it was so. God said, I'm first going to what you can stand. 
will be able to look at it and say, some of you say, if they leave me and you, how many of you have had those times? If they leave me and you, nobody. So some of these guys are robbing, uh, carry gun, drop the gun. They have faith to drop the gun. And they will know that they are idiots. I wish they I'm trusting God to change narration your battles. And you look, you used to imagine as something so overwhelming, something you will now look as if you stand to this. Stand to this. And I can do this. And I can do this. I can come, I can go through this and come out at the other end. I thought somebody would say amen. I said, I can go through this and come out at the other end. Uh, No, when God said that in the book of Judges, I think chapter seven, or we'll just jump a lot of things. God reduced Gideon's army from thirty-two thousand to three hundred. Said Gideon, the enemy is not as powerful as you think. Tell the people with you are too many. Say, but can't you see the number? They are numerous like locusts. But if you are sending an army, an army that is numerous as a locust, will you send three? Go to the camp of the enemy. Go and hear what they are saying. And I say, God close to the camp of the enemy. He saw a midnight talking to another. See, when he got there, they were lying so numerous. See, the issue is that if we are going to number problems here, whose problem should we start with here? If we want to solve. Okay? As a church, we want to be solving everybody's problem corporately. Question is, whose quest problem should be number one? Talk to me. In this end, just in this congregation, whose problem should be number one? Some of you say, yeah, I can defy. How many of you have been defying before and you see that the bread is reducing? They say, yeah, you can go. You can go. But suddenly you discover that. <laughs> what happens to you? <laughs> See, when he got there, the Bible said the Midianites and the Amalek, all the people of the East were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts. Their camels are without number, as the sand by the seashore. When the Gion came, there was a man telling a dream. I had a dream this night. That one said, he said, I saw a value. Roll into our camp and he just pulled down all the tents. And the other one said, Ah, that is nothing else than Gideon. That is Gideon. God has delivered us. God gave him both dream and interpretation. He stood where he was to hear the dream and to hear the interpretation. Hey, all your dealings have both experiences and interpretation. And that's the way God moves. There is tongues and interpretation of tongues. There, are, there is vision and interpretation of vision. Because if there is no interpretation, there is no profiting. The man just said, I saw bread. You see, these people have started hungry. They have, it's hunger that is dealing with them. But that was not it. God made sure that the, pe the person that had a dream was the person that had interpretation. But the person that needed it, yeah. When he went, he said, this is nothing else. And, you know, because of time, he, he got the victory. Are you following me? Got the victory so much in Judges chapter 8, verse 4 to 21. He was pursuing the Midianites, their kings. Even went to some Israelites and said, Please give me bread. I am pursuing the Midianites. And those people said, Are the Midianites in your hand now that we should give you? Anybody can support success. 
People see the median night in your hand. Many at times, that's why when some of you bring your bread, it's too late. Because you are waiting for me. You get what I'm saying? And you said that you did not invite you. Because when he needed bread, you are waiting for every. So you can Some people will carry presents they will never open there yesterday. Whereas the people that really need the present, they you, you ignore them. Always looking for who have break. Increase what leaves. That all of you here have people who have broken through around you. Why are you not lifted? Some of the people that lift you are still pursuing, though exhausted. And you give them bread. It's a waste opportunity. You know. I need people who are established. I'm going to establish ministry. Continue to be going. Hallelujah. So, some Israelites did not do that. He got the victory over those people. Go to verse 22. I got the victory. The Bible said, Then the men of Israel said to God, rule over us. How did Gideon move from? I'm the weakest of the smallest huh, to rule over us. Both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of the meat. Gideon said, I will not rule over. Nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Gideon said, I would like to make a request of you that each of you would give me the hearings of his, from his plunder there. They had golden hearings because they were Ishmaelites. They answered, we would gladly give them and they spread out the garment each tree into his hearings, into it the earrings from his plunder. Now the weight of the gold hearing which we said was 1,700 shekels of gold beside the present ornament, pendant, Purple robes, which were on the kings of Midian, and, the, and the, beside the chains that were around their camel's neck. Gideon made it to an effort. They set it up in the city, offer, and Israel played the lot there. He came and snared to Gideon to his house. The lost Midian was subdued before the children of Israel so that they lifted their heads no more. And the country was quiet for 40 years in the days of Gideon. Then Jerubal, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in Zion. Jerubal is the other name for Gideon. Gideon had 70 sons. How many of you know that uh, even in Bible times, have 70 children, God must be helped. Gideon moved from I'm the smallest to, in other words, it means suddenly Gideon became the most desirable bachelor because no woman can give you 70 sons. Some people say, what you have I be confused. It's not acceptable again. It was Gideon's time. He has 70 sons by his own offspring. For he had many wives. Let me tell you, when God bless you, women come. You can fight it, but I'm telling you this. But in the New Testament, if you can't have 70 sons, uh, we will just die 70 deaths. Why are you bony? Is it not true? So I just saw somebody's face bony. Is it? So I discovered that uh, Leah and Rachel were sisters married to one man. I was civil. War. Don't just stress yourself. By raising the same house, they will carry, they will go to water together. How are you, Jemima and Esiba? Try it. But he didn't just have wife, he even have concubine. How come what? So what me? That one was in Sheshem. Outside play. Who boy him a son? And his name was called Ab. And just hear with your hina here because some of you are hearing strange things now. What I'm telling you is that I'm just amazed. Johnny, 
That Johnny had all the trappings you have. John Gideon too hard at a point where people didn't believe that he was good. In fact, there was a time in the midst of it about to put to give him. But he got to a point when he asked for gold, people gave him. Are you following him? And he had he had people that he toasted and the ones that he did not toast. All of them followed him. <laughs> Gideon became a proven story of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 32 told us, time will fail me. And the, when he was speaking about patriarchs of faith, one of the people he mentioned that, he said, time will fail me to tell of Gideon, the first person he mentioned when he others after the story of Abraham and Isaac and all those people, he said, let me talk to you about Gideon. So Gideon became a proven story of faith. In other words, all I'm trying to tell you is that faith in you, the faith that is inside of you can overcome every limitation you are facing now. I don't know whether you believe it. You are a mighty man of valor. You can pass where you have failed. And you will never be able to remember what failure is. Faith. Jesus is not just coming. You are coming to me. I said you are coming. So much in Judges chapter 9 from verse 16 to 21. When, when, when the, the house of Israel were playing unfaithful to the house of Gideon and they had killed all his sons, one of his sons rose up and that son was saying, was one that gave that parable that we all know. Trees went to anoint a king over them. They went to the olive and they went to the fig and they went to the vine and they went to the bramble. And you know, it was actually using to describe. But this is what he was telling them. He said, Now, therefore, if you have acted in truth and sincerity, making Abimelech king, if you have dealt well with Jerubal, Jerubal is Gideon, and his house, and you have done him to him as he deserves. For my father fought for you. My father started from hiding. He became what? A warrior. Somebody said, My father. My father fought for you, risked his life, delivered you out of the hand. When he was saying it, and nobody was saying, you are over amplifying and expressing who Gideon is. Everybody knows that it is in truth that my father fought for you, risked his life, and delivered you from the hand of Midian. Because it's like cool over us. Every handicap that you come with, you can overcome it. And he handled Gideon as one. From the lot of things. Who them? Now, the challenge is if you believe that the reason of the evil you have seen in it is a fatalistic view that people can have. When I talk about Babylon, no escape. What do we do? Have victims. I'm not trying to teach you to be victims. That's not the teaching. How many of you have seen the darkness? Was the writer of Revelation who said, Some of you have seen the depths of Satan. Satan has depth. There's a way, there's, there are places you get to in this life. Ah! Aye. Aye. And I'm not talking about revelation and mystery. No. Talking about the depth. How many of you know there are depths of iniquity? Had one recent. Two guys. What an habit. Uh, rented an apartment for a week. One of them is not in Ibadan. He's far off. In the north. The other one, they are friends. 
obeyed one girl. They, they came together to sleep with one girl. So even me and the best that were discussing, we said, oh, so. We are not even fighting that they are carrying prostitutes again. What we are thinking of is so everybody should get his room so that we know where to start the preaching from. But that one, I don't know where to start the preaching from. I just use that one to describe I, I, and it happened in the bad here, so See, we're going to see do I Depths of Satan. Depths of iniquity in our time. Ah, ah, that weekend I had stories, my body was shaking. Boom me. These guys, we, they would just look at white people and collect $60,000. I was there when we were describing why is that not good? I was just saying, ah. these boys I'm talking about are 21 year olds. You see them defrauding people $70,000. Come, Babenye. Ah, oh God. The depth of Satan. Because if I'm beginning to say depth of Satan, some of you will be looking at ons. Some of you, you hear the stories that you are coming. What a mighty God. But that is playing your mind. What a mighty God. He's a mm, mm, 70,000. What a mighty. Then you just weigh your salary. And your friends, some of you young girls, they want to trouble you. They do their hair like this. Please stop. Don't let anybody trouble you. Oh, then if you they open your eyes, there is maggot and uh, and serpent on all day. I'm not speaking about MFM. Okay? I'm just saying, oh, they are what it, huh? it's empty, but but oh, they are not empty, but it's all right. But that's not your pathway. That's of Satan. Now some of you are too churched. That the day they shock some of you with stories happening around you. Can you pass that away? <laughs> How many of you remember when some of you coppers when you were in camp? By the time you left camp, and they are not you, you know that sister. If you know what she was saying, say, eh? That one who said, Come here. That's why they tell you there are people that never slept in that camp one day. They didn't sleep inside that. Because you thought everybody was obeying big. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 7. How many seven? 87. Rest in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, rest in the Lord. Remember when one of my daughters, many years ago, came to me and said, ah, Pastor, and we used to pray in school together. Let's pray. She dated the Yahoo. They are praying. I don't know whether my daughter was troubled or I don't know what happened, yeah. But the lady's house that she rented in Color Pojola did interior decoration there for 15 million. Same the rent. Interior decor of rented apartment. That my daughter cried out. I don't know why she cried. <laughs> it's not the money. She Especially because that person they used to more kedebo, tromo tende. When you begin to see these depths of Satan. So me from Babylon. People can never take color. But the Bible says, rest in the Lord. Say, tell your neighbor, rest in the Lord. Say, where you are going, it's going to happen by rest. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently. That's one of the hardest messages to preach to a young man. Wait on God. <laughs> they wait till last year and hell. <laughs> wait. <laughs> I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. That person that is thinking is even using to encourage himself. 
Because he minds waiting. How many of you don't mind waiting? Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways. Because of the wicked, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Have you seen wicked schemes? People will just sit and divide the nation with a proposal. Emerson. Increase tariff on Emerson. <laughs> All they are thinking. Look, see, see how some people just devised a road. The river. They know never finish it. You know my country. I love my country. Uh, at the sign. Now inside I go live like that. I don't know. Not the one that damages where I'm going. God say I should go and go to Philip. He, he has I have told myself by that song, I know where we will go with that. What's a man's confession? <laughs> he said inside he will live and die. But me, I just know my country. People that beat Lagos about the expressway for 21 years. We'll start with in 10 years. Accept the Lord, visit us. Just forget it. People have all of it. They will buy presidential jet. Don't give yourself at a heart attack. They will. Can't get it. That there is a covering for your school or not. So coming out of the open eyes. What the noise about uh, student loan? How much they want to give them? 70,000. Ah, I was ashamed. Eh? Yeah. And they said, so we give them 20,000, 20, upkeep. Ah, ah, give this to them, look. Give this to them, look. I thought they were going to really, by the way. Rest in the Lord. Who is resting in the Lord there? They are not. How many of you have not gotten to if we don't beat them, we must join them? Because look at that verse 7. It said, Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Go to verse 25. I have been young. I, I pray that truly you will be able to speak of God, confidence, and speak of your journey with confidence. Are you following me? Say, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendant begging for bread. Continue. He is ever merciful. God is going to bless you. You are going to be a blessing. This famine is not going to turn you to a tight fisted person. You are going to be a merciful person. He's ever merciful and what? And lends. His descendants are what? Blessed. Continue. Depart from evil. Tell your neighbor, don't be, don't be moved by evil. Depart from evil. Our address and our dwelling place, our part of, part of prosperity is not evil. Depart from evil. Do good and dwell forevermore. The Lord lost justice. He does not forsake his saints. I know the enemy keeps telling you this church thing you are doing is out of order. Nobody thinks about it. God does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall what? Cut off. Continue because we read it. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. Yeah. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous. He seeks to slay him. But yes, the Lord will not leave him in his hand. No matter what is happening, no matter the prevalence of evil, God will not leave you in his hands. Uh, God will not allow you to be tempted above the measure which you can bear, but with the temptation, he's going to make a way. The Lord will not leave him in his nor condemn him when he's judged. No matter the watchfulness of the wicked, he will not leave you in his hands. 
Continue because wait on the Lord. Keep his way. This is an encouragement. This is an encouragement to you when it's as if staying on God is a waste of time. Wait on the Lord. Keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you will see it. And he keeps doing it. I have seen the wicked in great power. It was one of the days I knew that Christians are hypocrites. You forgot that your man has already given birth. The truth of the matter is that party you hate is not sin. If I leave some of you, if I give you chance. Hey, Madame Idro. Ah. See the guy he bought for you. That's your problem, man. So why are you come? Why are you even here? You're only looking for your Chivido Christian version. I said I will not talk about this. I've seen the wicked in great power. I saw girls. There's no shame anymore. It's not, I don't even say again. Make you understand what I'm trying to say. No pastors are there. Hallelujah. Send the wicked in paper, spreading himself like a native green tree. Spreading. Yet he passed away. And behold, he was no more. And yet, some of you, if, you say, if your member impregnates somebody, 25 years, you will never forgive him. And he will be sitting at the back. Hypocrites. You don't love righteousness. It's not that you love righteousness. It's poverty you hate. But we got that shame be on our team. On our color land, no ni. Blue land, no. Let it pass away and behold, it was no more. I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man. Who are you going to mark? The wicked man or the blameless man? And observe the upright for the future. How many of you know the future is more important than the world? That's what no man can that he can, can, can chat. Say no man knows the future. And that knows his future. Mark a perfect man. The future of that man is peace. Continue. But transgressors will be destroyed together. Future of the wicked shall be what? Shall be what? If you have never prophesied in your life, you have a simple prophecy. Say to the righteous, shall be well with it. Say to the wicked, he shall be healed. Oh, the head where? It's not wishing anybody evil. Think that's what, think that's the platform life is built on. If that's the platform life is where, why are you here? But we keep seeing this is where we Oh, I've not entered the message now. So, but the salvation of the <laughs> so the salvation of the Lord of the righteous from the Lord is their strength in the time of trouble. I will jump on the Lord will help them and deliver them, he will deliver them from the wicked and save them. In it. If you go home, read Psalm 7, verse 1 to 28, so that I can jump. Now, let me tie this to Babylon. The greatest sign of the coming of the Lord is not an earthquake. 
show us the signs of when these things shall happen. There shall be war. That's not the first thing. You know what the first thing Jesus said? Take it to yourself that you are not deceived. The greatest sign of the climax of the age is deception. There will be so much prevalence of deception. There will be false Christ. False prophet. False platforms that will tell you this is the way to what? To go about it. Jesus said, because of time, said it in Matthew 24, 3 to 14, 15 to 31. Matthew 24, let's say 3 to 31. Luke 21, 7 to 28. And from verse 34 to 36. Let's look at Luke 21, 34 to 36. So when these things are happening to you, take it that your hearts be not, take it to yourself, let your heart be weighed down, carousing with drunkenness, with tears of this life, that the day come on you unexpected. It will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may escape. I think it was in Matthew when it, things are coming. They lift up your head. The day the angel announced for Gideon, the day Gideon did not perceive any sign about it. What is happening? It's going to be so depressing that you will never be able to sense that you are in the midst of it. You will feel so seduced to just join along with what the devil is doing. Are you following? But you are at the junction of what? Of redemption. There is something called redemption that is still at work today on earth. In the midst of the prevalence of works of darkness, there is a, what is called redemption, which is the work of God to buy back. The word redeem is to buy back. God is buying you back. He's not leaving you to the what? To the will of the wicked one. He will not leave you to be condemned when you are judged. Are you following me? So, redemption must be in our mind every time. In Revelation 17, from verse 1 to 6, 6 just Look at some things in the book of Revelation. See how far we can go. Then one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me saying, come I will show you the judgment of the great Aleph. Understand why the word Babylon was called an Aleph. The Aleph seduces. The greatest problem we have today is that we, have, we are liable to he said this to think the way evil is prevailing that we have no other option to it than to succumb to it. That is the that is what is called see. I'm gonna if I have time, I will speak to you about seduction, Babylon, and sorceries. Bible called spoke about a seduction and sorcery. Sorcery is what makes you hurt against who you are. When somebody is under sorcery, under enchantment. Is drawn to do what he will not do. Do you know how many people are acting not to their type because they've been seduced with the sorceries of this spirit called Babylon? Because they are just look at it that if I don't do it, it's no other way. And it's a seduction. Are you following me? But what the Bible is introducing to us here is not his greatness, it's his judgment. Let me show you the judgment of what? Of the great Allah. Who sits on many waters? Continue. Please continue. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Continue. She carried me away in the wilderness. 
And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and seven horns. Now, this description makes it repulsive because it's a beast, very well description. Are you following me? Names of blasphemy. But she was arrayed in purple and adorned with what? Gold and precious stones and pearls. You don't want the beast or you want the stones. You don't want the beast or you want the gold. And so she was arrayed and sat with it with precious stones with pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and filthiness of fornication. And on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of our Lord and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. If we look like even the saint, he had power over them. Are you following? I saw her. I marveled. One of the things that will happen in see the weakness of the world. Let me tell you the truth. See, so say all of you that I did I said, as I said, there yeah, is no it's not normal. No normal. Oh, man. May you not be may you not become uh, acquainted with bad things until they become a marvel. Sometimes I still still marvel. How a nation, how a man sleeping with a man can be a national discourse. It's man trouble. Yet, and it will become what a nation is having riot about. And so, I marvel. You marvel. I marvel how they relate with an international icon or cross dressing. If God did not judge Bob Risk. I marvel. Some of those people, do you know how many nations they have? You are praying. Other Lord, they must not deny my passport. They are entering freely. Until one day you say, Kilo one base. If you think about a cross dress going, you are saying, we change the who you are. The, the mystery Babylon it started working on you. Marvel. Let us go to verse 12 to 18. The ten ones which you saw are ten kings which have not yet, who have received no kingdom as yet, but they will receive authority for one hour as king with the beast. They have one mind that will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war with the lamb. Is the lamb. Son of God. The lamb will overcome them for is the Lord of lords and king of kings. Those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues. Are you following me? Do you see the things gaining spread on the face of the earth? Moving from culture to culture. There's a time he said, Ah, gay, we never come to a play. You are dealing with the spirit. I think you are dealing with um, people. You are dealing with mystery. Is it not this our presidents that go and line up to collect the IMF? If they don't have the money, you will protest. If they tell them that the only way they can get the money is to allow something, they turn a blind eye. You don't get it. These things are, are intertwined. And you think. How many of you know there is, there is a riot in Kenya? Do you even know why there is a riot in Kenya? Kenya is looking for bailout. For the terms. There is an ungoverned country in the world that is called eight. Most ungoverned space in the world. 
Then he had to agree that they will carry their policemen 80. They have been police. It's, it's a slaughter slam. Because in 80, there are gangs that are harmed to the teeth. They killed their president in 80. They entered the Sarkindi. Then the Kenya said, we carry our policemen. Because we need money. That's why you don't get it. And slavery is it going on? I think uh, uh, William Weaver first. You don't even know. Me. I have a problem with church people because they don't see anything. Say, Father, open my way, open my way, open my way, open my way. They don't even understand the dynamic. So you'll be hearing Babylon is in the USA. Pastor. But some of you cannot know because you are even seated in it. You, you are even missing. Israel, Syria. <laughs> The ten us which was on the beast, this we ate the Lord, make her desolate, naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. God has put it in their heart, fulfill his purpose, and to give their kingdom to the beast, unto the words of God are fulfilled. Verse 18. And the woman which you saw is the great city which reigns over the king. If I have time, I will get there. If you remember in Revelation 13, verse 1 to 9, I think we read it in this series, but three beasts. That was the dragon. Revelations 12. Then there was the beast. And there was the false prophet. So th- these, are, these are the things behind the operations of what? Of this Babylon. Go to Revelations 18. Verse 1 to 8. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. Having great authority, the heart was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is falling, is falling. It's become a dwelling place of demons. A prison for every foul spirit. A cage for every unclean and hated bird. All the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of our fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with us. It was inevitable. The merchants of the earth have become through the abundance of our luxury, I had another voice from heaven saying, come out of her. How many of you remember I said that the judgment of Babylon is the exit of God's people. Come out of her. You must identify this spirit and you must make sure that you are not a partaker of it. You must come out of her because it's judged. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in our sins, let you receive of our plagues. For since I reached to heaven, God has remembered and he could Render to her just as she has rendered to you. Repay her double according to her works. If you, if you remember my last week's teachings, that the judgment of, against Babylon is vengeance. It's to repay to her what she has done. Repay her double according to the works in which she has mixed. Mix double for her. In the measure she has glorified herself and lived luxury, same measure, give her torment and, and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. I'm no widow. And I will not see sorrow. It has become a system that looks like it never believed. That is what made it very seductive. I will never. This is the way it will be. Therefore, our plagues will come upon one day, death and morning fame. She will be utterly born with fire, for strong is the Lord. Who what? Go to verse 20. I'm just jumping. Out. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, O apostles. O heaven, you holy apostles and prophets. Problem today is, if God decides to judge this system, what will be your joy? You know, most of us cannot rejoice if it's judged. There is a level of interaction that we have had with it. How many of us truly can say we have come out of it? That we have not drank of his seduction. That it has not been out of it. How many of you truly want God? You know, it's like when Nigerians are praying, God should do for us. What they are saying is the one that does not stand. How many of you want God to judge corruption? 
Kaong ko si Lord Gomen Chama. All of you are like, Kidi, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I did not go, I want to go, I want to Some of you, I want to go. When pastor is very mentally, I rebuke that judgment. He said, hmm, this way, Jesus. Pastor, the, the, the wrath of man does not work, the righteousness of God. The, when you see people talking like that, and that's and yeah, it's very hard for you to interact in this system without a connect. Some of your company, a process of where you are working, say, Father, George Babylon. Eh? Eh, saw that now. I saw that people's voices are now low. Say, oh Lord! Judge corruption in this land. I today look at me and prophesy. More than that. Rejoice over all oh, heaven, you holy apostle and prophet, for God has avenged you on her. No? And he was thrown, so, so many things, he was thrown like a great millstone. In her was found, the only things found in Babylon was the blood. Sister it. No, don't. It was found in her. The blood of the kings shamed were pain. The merchants were countries were shamed. because his influence is over the waters. When you see waters in the Bible, it's speaking about multitude, incredible number of people. It's so prevalent, it's so prevalently expressed in every place. The nation that most people that you are even saying that broke through are traveled. It is, you know, how many arranged marriages are happening? In the, who are marrying plan? <laughs> you are telling me Babylon, Babylon, I don't like Babylon. How of you even attended as witness? Should I say God should hold you responsible? You know that where I went to arrange, but I arrange, I just ask you. You know, we are. We've made everything because the only thing that matters to us now is breakthrough. Most people seduced. Our ah, Lord got everybody. The ones that our Lord did not get, their blood flowed. You will have to resist it to the shedding of blood. I don't see Christians today who are ready to resist to the other. Do they need to threaten your life? Just need to threaten your hanging. Threaten your connection. Some of you just watch for this Sunday so One day I will have audit teaching this Babylon. I would have gone to Revelation 19, Revelation. But let's go to Isaiah 47. This is why I want to go to Isaiah. To see that all those words used in our judgment are prophetic. Look at Isaiah 47. Thank you. Come down, sit in the dust. Somebody say, sit in the dust. Oh, daughter of Babylon. If you understand Bible prophecy, you see, God told. Israel in Isaiah 52. Awake, shake yourself from the dust. And he told Babylon, come down to the dust. This means I am humbling what is proud. I'm exhorting what has been humbled. Shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from that feeling that told you that the downtrodden of the earth. Are you following me? Say, God, me, 
There is a me and me. The me is not the downtrodden of the earth. The faith inside of me overcomes this world. Don't live as though you are at the mercy of the, of the prevailing darkness of the world to survive. Are you following me? Are you following me? Come down in the city in the doors, O virgin daughter of Babylon, O daughter of the Cardians. You will no more be called tender and delicate. This you will accorded the honor. Then you get to a point of so much strength that the things people highly exalt is nothing before you. No more be called tender. Some of you need to stop following some people on social media. They are no more to be called tender and delicate. How can you? And I ask you, with TDJX, you don't know. I ask you, with you don't know anything that concerns your life, but you are following Katie Blessing. And you now say you are having bad dreams. That's where it came from. I'm telling you the truth. All your bad dreams. You what because and you are following Banner Boy. And you are burning. The Grammy. The Grammy. And that's where you are getting inspiration for your next clothes. Ah. That's where it came from. Don't come here and be disturbing me. Oh, Babylon is so exalted before you. Take the millstone. Grind me. Look a queen. We need to get to a point in our life that which is highly exalted before men. It's an abomination. Are you following me? Grind me. Remove your veil. Take off your skull. Cover your tie. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame shall be said. I will take vengeance and I will not arbitrate with a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence. Go into darkness, O daughter of the Cardinal. You shall no longer be called the Lady of the Kingdoms. How many of you remember he said I, I, she sat in her seat and said I will be a queen forever. You shall no longer become lady of kingdom. I, I, I was hungry with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You show them no mercy. On the elderly, you lay yoke very heavily. And you said, I will be a lady. I will be, the, I will be so appealing. But God is going to raise a people that the seductions of Babylon will have no power in their mind anymore. She will no longer be called a lady. There's nothing appealing about her anymore. So that she did not take the things to her. Now remember the letter hand of them. Continue. Continues. Therefore hear now this. You who are given to pleasures. Who dwell security. Who say in your heart. I am and there is no one beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Nor shall I know the loss of children. These two things shall come upon you in it. That's why the judgment of Babylon was what? The moment. Change your eyes. Some things must lose their appeal and grip. Are you following? Tonight as one man. You will stand to, to, to. You are not under his control. You are not. Teach you. And not, it's not a must to be subservient to this prevalent darkness. Are you following? You are the people that will have joy when you don't have money. There are people like that. Listen, we are not, we are not trying to let Lord uh, give us money so that we will, we will not be like you get what you know, our Christians do. Let them let us have our own bizarre bizarre. Spiritual bizarre bizarre. I'm not saying you will not have money. We can abound. We can abase. Some of us, I'm a dojo tiyo wo. 
When we married people, we married. Did we marry for money? Are you following me? Let nobody recreate your story and redirect your story. Let Babylon sit in his dust. I'm not, I'm not under your seductions. Your sorceries over me are broken. Ah. Emma has gone. Ah. Two people came later. Bro. What happened? But these two things shall come upon you. The loss of children and widow. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the great multitude of what? Your sorcery. I don't have time. If you read that Revelation 18, it spoke about a sorcery. There's sorcery on earth. And I'm not speaking about people calling your name in dark places. Do you know how many of us have acted against who we are? And by the time they tell us, something came upon me. What came upon you? You know what came upon you? You reyielded yourself to the seducing power. Hold. You will not read your Bible. You watch series on, on Netflix, Prime. Three months you are following it, Wula. Yet you have never studied your Bible for 20 minutes. You say, I don't know what came upon me. I tell you what came upon you. That's what came upon you. But get here, Nye. Okporuko, Eni. Where's he respond? That is God that when you sleep at home, that no, you don't have joy again. Who took your joy? Who took it? Some of the things that are just waking you up, you don't even know where it came. You just discovered that one day, something just told you. And you are bombarded. You leave some of you. Some of you are uh, Thai currency. We get you. You leave Thai currency. You go to even when you go to church, see what our press worship has become. You said, "Do you know what came upon you? I know what came upon us. Fame. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Nobody is singing to God again. We are talking about Babylon. It's sorceries." There were things that if they was 10 years ago, we would be doing in church, we would be fight. But they, even people are asking their geo, and verse let's do it for them so that the people can come. Some of you are even afraid when, we are, when I declare meeting now because you are afraid. I want to move my invite on you. Why? Also, you will not do what? <laughs> you know how many men? Ministries don't go three years now before they are scattered. The core value. I go on social media now. All pastors, I, I, I don't have the English word. You know the trend now? But already you do. The saving culture. The parents said, hey, the blood of Jesus, nobody is preaching again. Everybody is saying, trying to say something that appeals to you. You are even part of the manifestation of the sorcery. Congregation. What? It will come. Everybody's trying to hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you three things to do about your budget. See, they've been teaching you budgeting. What happened to you? But when I'm teaching you Babylon, say, Pastor, it's not teaching relevant. You've been seduced. You can't even have, you can't listen to sound doctrine again. When I'm speaking about this great Allah, you think it's a, it's a spirit. It's an atmosphere. We've been seduced. We don't even know how to believe in God's power again. We seduced so much. We don't even know what prophecy is about. It's not it's about now mentioning somebody's sketch and somebody's phone number. I think that's how we got here. It's prophetic when I tell you there's a you that God has put strength inside of. I'm prophesying. That's prophecy. Not about calling your name and telling you that tomorrow morning they will call you at the embassy. We've been seduced. Our, we don't even power flows only on the principle of faith. We can gather together, join hands, and trust God to move. Everything does not have to be shaken before God's power move. God has not stopped being God. We were just seduced. 
Tension span. I was, listening, I was watching one preacher on um, Facebook. He said, he said we even to, Where did we get this? Someone must be 45 minutes. Church. This church is a very strange church. I hope you. Five he said, Where is he written? Where is he written? Which means it has become so. And when, we, when pastors are commenting, and they say, 15 minutes to greet the GO. Nobody will change that one. 10 minutes to greet the mama. And mama is here. But it's a 45 minutes. Be wished you. Hello, Gumwole. Hey, Lesu. Hey, Ni Lesu now. Some of you have not prayed in six months. Serious prayer. It has not happened. I'm serious. Whatever you are doing as if you are serious. You have not prayed. You have not prayed one hour. But tongue. Six months. Just go here and say, Even my lead worship, Lala. Tanesa, my sweetie. Oh, for now. Let me stop this message because this message is dangerous. I'm just entering the dangerous part. And I want, I will stop it for anniversary. But you have trusted in your way. I will read to verse 15. This one. Hey, where you are. You have trusted in your way. You have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge has warped you. Do you know the meaning? It has perverted you. And you have said in your heart, I am. There's no one. Do you see how people speak conclusively on some things as if they are God? Are you still doing Bible? I don't know the Bible will make it. said so. Who is it that will say a thing and it will come to pass? When the Lord has not said, who told you God does not still bless and lift people? Who told you that that, 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 that truth and, and integrity is not still valuable. Who told us? Who seduced us? Therefore, evil shall come upon you. And you will know, you will not know from where it arises. Trouble shall fall upon you. You will not be able to put it off. Desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantment and the motive of your source, in which you have labored from you. Perhaps they will be able to profit you. What are your enchantments? One of the things that continue to call Babylon throughout the book of Daniel that there are wise men who could not predict. Who labor so much for a future that continues to remain unpredictable for them. Babylon, what are you trying? What is it promising you? A future. Or what can't it interpret for you? A future. There is only one person that says it. The future of Nigeria is not in anybody's hand. My future is in God's hand. Anything God says I can be, I don't know. But it is not incredible for God to raise the dead. If God decides to do anything, He will do it. Are you following me? Don't let your monthly progress. Pro, 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 Progrostinators, the people that always do you know the trend of life? The trend of life is the trend of the world. Oh, by faith that the words were framed by the word of God. Yeah, because of time. Hello. You see, that's why I said, prevailing description of when I say seduction, deception. Deception is what makes you home, what you will naturally succumb. So it's seduction, but it's like sorcery. That's real. See how fast who bewitched this society? See how fast our society has changed before us. Even elders have, be, have not behaving like elders. Echo can be a 
Elders can't even offer counsel again. Many years ago, I was trying to date. I knew that she was not the best. But the day she came to see me, in the and her mother called. Was on food. And her mother said, Oh, yeah, everybody. She had been using condom. Not like, talk about me or somebody else. This lady was less than 21. This is not it. Even when that can't speak like Edda again. The only thing they ask is social law. Was it another one? Ask stories. Mother sat me down and said, I like you. For me, I like, I like I'm not having anything. I don't have anything against ministry. But we shall make sure your ministry is like Pastor Chris. She doesn't even want to know whether I'm praying. She, to, she told me, I'm not telling you, they, they told me these things. No, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. And some of you too, how do you choose your pastor? How do you choose? Turn to your feet. It's our lot. How do you choose your pastors? You know now, it's so beautiful. It's, so, it's not important for a pastor to be, to be answered. This generation. Uh, I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. That's why when everybody is shouting scandal, I just laugh. The way from people came is scandalous. Pastor, think what I was in this, but the when a lady told me, I'm not attending. <laughs> I tell you stories. She told me she was the person that made me know Pastor years ago. She told me she was, she said, I'm going there now. She said, He's not married. I'm telling you, the lady told me. It's not married. Dad, there are so many single ladies here every day. Said, I don't know him. Said, that was this I'm telling you was in 2008. 2009. I didn't know Pastor Kodi. She was trying to tell me that my ministry was not moving forward. And if I see this single, other single pastor, whose ministry was established, huh? she had gone to try a lot. I said, he will never find you. I told her, he will never find you. Not you. So many strange sorceries have found access. I'm going to pray only one prayer. Whenever the seductions and sorceries of Babylon has entered me, Lord, I purge me of them today. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Gideon must come to know that the Amalekites are not sovereign. They can be numerous, but they are not sovereign. They can be numerous, but they are not almighty. You will fight them as one. You can stand toe to toe with the enemy. Walk the walk you have chosen to walk. Purge me. It's even in ministry. Fame! Take money out of ministry and let's see how many of us will remain. Take this glamour out of it and see. It's now, it's now so, so beautiful to say I'm married to a pastor. Because in our minds we've been seduced. 
Ministry is not a pathway to fame. Pudge me, Lord. Just, just pray. Just pray one more minute, please, everybody. Just pray for yourself. Let the Lord subdue every power of darkness. Thank you, Father. Father, we yield ourselves to you today. We yield, we yield, we yield. No other name but the name of Jesus. No other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus is worthy of glory. Is worthy of honor. Is worthy. We have come to worship no other person than Jesus. We have no doubt in your power, Lord. And we have no doubt in what you can do in our lives. And we have no fear of the enemy. For you can fulfill all your promises. You can attain all your purposes. So we yield our hearts to you tonight. In faith. And praise no other name than the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's take our offering tonight. We're blessed. Hallelujah. You're out of tune. You're out of tune. Continue that song. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other name.
Father, we declare tonight in the name of Jesus that we are not seduced, we are not afraid of any satanic device. We are not moved by any promise, every false promise of hell. Neither are we terrified by his fear. The Lord is our fear, the Lord is our dread. And he has become our sanctuary. Father, tonight rest the heart of your people in you. Let them wait in you securely. And let them find answers to their expectations. Show them that all power is in your hands. Show them that all sufficiency comes from you. Open your hands and satisfy every desire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. All right, we see tomorrow, 6 to 7 p.m., we'll pray. On Sunday, we come together because the impossible is possible. Say the impossible is possible. That's what I think is at now. That's a caveat. So I can, I can change you. But we are moving very fast into our anniversary season. And we are still beginning the spirit of it. So please, let's get into the flow. I think the total unveiling of all the speakers, everything. It's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. So we are getting full flow into, because tomorrow it will be exact one month to the anniversary. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. All right. As you go home tonight, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you victory over whatever seduced and, and weighed down your heart in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. I preach, I speak healings, restorations to your bodies, the power of God to perfect you, to bring beauty out of you. There will be nothing of shame, nothing of stress, nothing of doubt in your journey. You are impenetrable, you are immovable, you are built with strength in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. It is well with you. Have a great night. Exalt you, Lord, my King, and I will bless.